Today, I'll be answering some of your questions. This is a Ask Savannah video. And if you've never joined me before for one of these videos, basically on our website, Black Witch Coven, there is an option for people to ask me a question, which I will answer via video. So don't ask me questions there that you don't want me to read out online on video. Now I haven't done this video in probably a few months now, I think, or has it just felt like it's been forever? But one of the reasons is, is because I've been shooting uh, videos for the spell casting series and I've really been enjoying doing that and I'm quite busy. So I don't always get an opportunity to fit in this video where I just read um, some of your questions and give my version of an answer back to you guys. Um, the other reason is because here in Louisiana, Hurricane Ida began its journey. And uh, if you're in other parts of the world, I'm in Louisiana right now in the southern, one of the southern states of the USA. And uh, this area is prone to hurricanes. They get quite a few every year. And every year it has a slightly different way of affecting uh, the environment down here. And this year it knocked out all of the electricity. I think in some parts of this state, there's still no electricity and it's been like three weeks. Admittedly, uh, it was a category four hurricane when it hit the shoreline. And so uh, people that lived on the shoreline, of course, were affected negatively by the hurricane. But here, more in the city centre of New Orleans, we just lost power. And so uh, thanks to my team members, <laughs> we were able to uh, navigate out of um, New Orleans and uh, spent a lovely forced vacation time down in Florida. Had a lovely beach vacation, working vacation always working and enjoying a good spiritual cleansing, some lovely rituals on the beach and all that other great stuff that I normally do when I hit a new environment. So I'm, I always love to take advantage of an environment that I um, enter into. But I must admit, and you probably get this vibe from me, I'm a little edgy. You know, I actually have shot the introduction to this video twice now. And the first introduction, I was told that I really shouldn't release it because socially, socially it would be um, not received well. And because that is where we are in this world right now. We have to stay, we have to be very mindful of our words because we may be perceived as being something that really we're not or the, the conversation will be hijacked, torn apart, and then you could be torn apart. Not that I'm worried about that. But uh, overall, like Lady Hannah and Edwin would say, Savannah, what you're going to say online, we might get the backlash for. Like we've got to deal with with all the, the hate emails that come through. And so for, their, for, for them, I won't release what I said before. But I have been really edgy because of the way that we can't honestly express ourselves without all the backlash and all the hate. It's, it's really interesting right now in the world that you really have to have the socially approved opinion on a topic, the socially approved look, the socially approved um, be seen as a way of existing in the world. To me, it's almost like creating an avatar of yourself that you're pushing out to the world and you can't really share your own beautifully flawed, sometimes inappropriate opinion because you're going to upset somebody yeah so I've, I've tried to stay away from that and I stay away from people who 
are constantly trying to build up their own ego or create an avatar of themselves because it stands out like dog's balls, right? Like people that are just trying to create an avatar of themselves that this is who they really are. But in real life, they're not that. And this isn't a judgment call on them. It's just annoying to see because you're trying to touch, move and inspire other people, but you're not like that yourself. You haven't reached that pinnacle. You're trying to go on that journey, but you're not saying that you're on a journey. You're saying you are that. It bothers me because once you say that you're that, once you give yourself that label, then you feel like you have to own that label. This is where mental health kicks in. Now you're really screwing yourself up because you're trying to live up to this thing you said you are and you haven't even done work to get to where you want to be on that journey. It's it's basically, you know, this blueprint that you're setting up out there and then you're you're down here. You know, it's it's very hard to be an accomplished occultist at 24. I hate to say that. I'm not saying that I'm accomplished occultist. I feel like I'm still on the journey. But when I see so many people saying, here I am giving themselves all of these labels, all of these titles, and they're 22, how do you do that? It's not even possible unless you're giving yourself credits for what you've done in a past life. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. But it, it, look, even in our group, it bothers me when people give themselves labels because a label is absolutely nothing it's nothing in the left hand path or as an occultist what's most important is that you're getting the benefit from that work you're getting the benefit from not sharing your knowledge online or writing a book but you're personally receiving you're on your path of ascension because you're putting into practice what you're learning along the way. And then once you've learned that, then sure, share it with other people. So once again, it's not shaming, but it just bothers me because I see all of these, especially the title, Warrior Goddess, the Warrior Goddess movement. It bothers me because if you're a Warrior Goddess, you don't need to go around marching, saying in a circle, I'm a warrior goddess, I'm a warrior goddess, because you are a warrior goddess. You don't care about the labels because you're getting out there and you're taking action and you've, you're have you doing it. You don't have to constantly affirm that I'm a warrior goddess, I'm a warrior goddess, because when you wake up in the morning and you're all by yourself, you know that you're not a warrior goddess and you just feel shit about yourself and then you've got to go to one of your vices to numb out or call one of your warrior goddess friends so you can feel like a warrior goddess. It bothers me because on the left-hand path, it's all about submitting to the journey. It's about following a path of enlightenment, a path. We're not here at a destination yet. We're on a path. So if you want to save yourself a whole bunch of mental anguish, take away the title, stop it with all the self-affirming memes and just try and do, try and do. <laughs> I sound like Yoda. Yeah, so that's why I've been staying off social media a lot because otherwise I just feel like I want to be a warrior goddess and slash everything down. <laughs> Yeah, and my group is very much like, please don't talk about so many things that I'm passionate about because I am thoroughly annoyed at a lot right now. So anyway, I swapped from wine to coffee and now we can just get into it. All right. M Brown says, or asks me, you guys did a breakup break them up spell for me and a candle i think it's working already i received a text from my loved one asking about it so he can move in i don't want to jump the gun too soon or get too excited but i have positive thoughts do you think there is anything else i need to do on my part or order anything else to keep this going until he's out or should i do nothing at all and wait 
I can't thank you enough for everything and this means so much to me. Okay, thank you. All right, so this spell was only done a month ago. All right, so let me talk generally for everyone else um, who does a spell and then you get a little bit of success or you get some vibe that the spell's working and then what should you do? I like to think that once, because once you cast a spell and release the spell, um, you need just to accept that that spell is in motion and what's going to happen is going to happen, especially when we do a high frequency spell, such as a, a black magic spell or a heavy witchcraft spell. That's pretty powerful energy out there. And sometimes if you push it too much, what you'll do is push too much energy at that individual and they may just back away. And that's something that you don't want. You don't want to push too much energy at them that they feel uncomfortable with that energy. They just don't like that feeling and then they back off even more. What I will recommend is I like the candles for backing up high frequency energy and then doing candles, whether it's a the jar candle or just um, a simple, this is a large candle, you wouldn't do that, but maybe a chime candle or a taper candle, just putting that frequency out there. It's a softer style of energy and maybe that just keeps your intention out there. But I wouldn't double down and do another heavy black magic style spell, a high frequency spell, um, especially if it was a difficult situation and, um, and you've received some positive result from that just let it ride for now after about three months if after three moon cycles you feel like it's something that you want to uh, work on again then do it but I wouldn't say before that time LC I'll just say the initials says I have a friend who has a complex situation Basically, she wants to leave her husband, but he's afraid of being alone. My friend wants to know if a spell can be done to help him find someone else. Any suggestions? All right. So, of course, this is all generalizations. If this friend, if your friend, let's just say it's you. So say you, you have a husband and you're feeling guilty about actually leaving the husband and what you wanting what you want is for your husband to really find someone else so you don't feel guilt or maybe in some countries some legal systems you need them to move out first or um or ask for a divorce especially i know there's some countries that whoever in africa south africa if you don't, whoever asks for the divorce, like if a woman asks for a divorce, she misses out on some of the, um, basically doesn't get a great um, payout. Payout, that's the wrong word for it. Sorry, it's been a long day. Um, so firstly, you have to decide that it's right for you to end the marriage. Because what you'll do for your guilt and shame, you've still got a strong cord to this, to your partner. And so you have to make the decision to sever that cord. So maybe you need a cord cutting um, spell yourself so you can actually feel confident enough to leave. Because sometimes what I've found has happened, if we did a spell to help the partner find someone new, if you have unresolved feelings, quite often you can then act out or say, listen, I really want you. Let's make our marriage better. And it ends up in a, in a crazy little circle or crazy situation. So it, these types of things always require a consultation beforehand to decide what is best for you, your legal situation, your money situation. But if it wasn't um, for all of that, I would do um, basically a breakup spell for you and them. And then if you wanted to do a spell after that where they can find someone else, that would be a nice thing to do. It's even white magic. You want the best for them to be able to move on. And you probably want yourself metaphysical wound healing 
to help you not feel the guilt and shame that you're feeling because that's why you've asked this question. All right. The next is, hey, Savannah, this is Charles. I hope you're doing well since the last time I spoke to you last year. I wanted to ask you about your mammon ritual spell for money. Is it safe for me to do or shall you do it for me? Please let me know as it should be performed during the waxing moon, which is going on currently. Yeah, so these type of Ask Savannah questions, um, they get printed off when I'm about to do a video. So um, if you're sending through a question for this pile of questions, I'm not going to get to it. And I don't have time um, to, to answer emails, um, email questions right now. My, my days are just packed, gratefully, so grateful for that. But to answer your question, I believe that you should always try and do these magical spells yourself first. Mammon is quite a lovely energy to work with, kind of like the clonic um, energy. And I feel mammon is, you don't have to do a pack or anything like that with that spirit to work with, with him. I think he's really quite lovely to work with. And I feel like you can do it um, quite well yourself. My way of working with these ancient spirits is to build a relationship with them and uh, try coming back, if not weekly, come back monthly and start to form this relationship where you're giving a little offering, you're putting forward your request, you come back, you do it. You're not having any expectation. You're really getting into a relationship. Think of it like dating. If you can remember dating, you don't just go straight in there and have sex with them, right? That's called hiring a prostitute. What you're doing is forming a relationship. You're softening them up. You're holding a hand, maybe a little kiss, maybe a bouquet of flowers, maybe a box of chocolates. You know, you're you're getting in there slowly. You're forming a relationship. You're not just jumping in there, because otherwise the um, you'll probably be re rejected. So try that. But yes, definitely you can do it yourself. Next question. I need some help with some undesirables in the neighborhood. Can you recommend a working to eliminate them permanently? Not sure who they are. Um, well, if you're not sure who they are, it's very hard to eliminate them. Um, undesirables, you mean just like some hoods that just come and hang out and do burnouts, donuts in front of your house or stuff like that, um, you know, Maybe just go and what's those like road spikes? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just guessing. It's if you really don't know who they are, um, it's like I was going to say maybe hot foot magic or um, stuff like that. Otherwise, really, you want protection, you know. So they, if they're hoods or they're, you know, I I don't know who they are, but you want protection work, so. You, you and your property is not affected by them. So basically, when they're walking past your place, that they're just overlooking it. But um, I don't know. I don't know of spells that can block random unknown people from doing random unknown things. It's, it's a little bit hard. So that's where you do your protection type of magic. Um, Zoe asks... Hi, Zoe. Hi, Savannah. I want to adopt your three-stage system for magic as shown on YouTube and your Black Witch Coven website, i.e. money, attraction, maintenance, and prosperity. But I have a question about a negative side effect that I have experienced as a result of being successful with money spells in the past. I tend to gain weight and also stop talking and also stop taking as much exercise because I'm caught up with trying to bring in and maintain my money. You know, I'm smiling because I was, that was the answer I was about to share with you. Um, because when you start to make a lot of money through magic, uh, it comes down to that uh, balance. So, you know, that life coaching wheel that's popping in my head, you know, where you've got like your family, friends, and then you've got yourself, you know, your fitness and health, and you've got your work and studies and stuff like that. And and 
it's always a juggle in life as to which part of that pie graph is um, intruding on other areas. And when you do a money spell and it starts to come into abundance, and I'm laughing because it's my problem all the time. And, and what a grateful problem to have. This money all starts to come, all of this abundance, and then you've got to try and work out, okay, you're shifting your shift systems or the way you do business or you've got to stop and change things. And this takes a lot of time. Even to delegate it out to other people, you've got to think of the strategy or what you're going to do and then be able to de dedicate it. There's no simple system to that only to try and remember that it is um, a balancing act and try and as I said this is my constant challenge I try and get meditation and the exercise done before 9 a.m in the morning now that's not always easy my group will laugh at me because I'm renowned for sleeping a few hours it's just the way my body works I don't like sleeping a lot and, but I really try and get my meditation and my exercise done before 9 a.m., but it's not always possible. And it really, um, it is a struggle. And it's something I ask both Astaroth and Lucifer for um, constantly to, to help me um, balance my life. But I'm, I'm always so grateful. So I never say, oh, the money is overwhelming for me and I don't know you know my life is so out of balance and I don't know what to do like it, I'm always in a state of gratefulness when it comes to money but I just ask okay help help me understand a way to keep better balance in my life so um yeah I can't say you can do another spell you know Mia does the weight loss spells and stuff but even that you've still got to have time and time is that commodity that is so limited we really can't change so um yeah you, you're just asking can you advise me on how to reduce these negative outcomes magically without stopping the money magic from working so um she says as always thanks for your guidance products and spells so you're so welcome zo but um yeah it, it is <laughs> just keep doing the magic spells uh, the money magic. Money magic is something that you need to continuously do. It's really called money sorcery. And um, I totally believe in that three-phase system where you're attracting the money. So that's a different type of energy. And if you have different businesses or different projects, you can be doing money spells to attract to that business because it's in a growth phase. And then you might have different, maybe yourself or a different project you're working on. You want to maintain that. You don't want that money slipping away anywhere. You want to, you want to keep that. And then the wealth is like when you're quite comfortable. Oh, and you don't, I'm not talking about mega wealthy, Oprah Winfrey level wealthy. I'm just saying when you're comfortable because a lot of people are comfortable, but you want to be able to, uh, where do you go from that phase? And we're talking about investments and um, stockbrokers and, and people that are maybe buying additional property. That's, see what I mean? There's all different levels of, of money magic. And of course, um, just adding to that system, not that this is your question, there's the fast money. That's when you need something. You're not asking to win the lottery, but maybe you need a bill paid. Maybe you, you have something coming up and you need some fast money from somewhere. That's different. And then also there's the road opener or the payback. Road opener is when you need different opportunities to come your way. So it's not money, but opportunities kind of in the money bucket, like realm of work, but, but different. And then payback when someone owes you money or you need money uh, from a different person or resource, you want that money to be able to flow back. So that's different phases of money work, but all very, very different, but all under the same umbrella. But whenever it comes to money work, you've got to like, if you have a negative thought, you think cancel, cancel, cancel. <laughs> and, um, put in a positive affirmation in its place. So the biggest tip is 
whenever you're having like a, a overwhelming thought when it comes to money, like so much money's coming your way or you're so grateful or you're out of balance. First, like, thank you, Lucifer, that uh, will boon, clonic, mammon, whoever you're talking to, thank you so much. And, you know, whoever your God or goddess is, please help guide me so I can have some more balance in my life. Please show me a way that I can have more balance and just um, go with that guidance just to create a different path. But um, you know, like I said, this is a constant problem I have, but I'm so grateful for this um, opportunity for personal growth. <laughs> Next question. This is from Mark, uh, I'll just say Mark R. Mark, hi. Uh, I gave my soul to Satan. He is my master. I want to worship him. How do I do it? Next question is from Mark, Mark R, I'll just say. He says, I gave my soul to Satan. He is my master. I want to worship him. How do I do it? I will do whatever is asked of me. So what is asked of you then? Like what is, I don't know. Did, did I do the ritual for you? And I don't think I did because you wouldn't be asking this question. But that's not to say that you can't find out yourself. So for many of us, it's very hard to sit quietly and allow those thoughts to come in from the spiritual world. We, we distrust those thoughts. And it's uh, it's hard to, you know, it's more time consuming to learn astral projection, that type of stuff. And many times we don't remember the dreams or some of the symbology of the dream state. So the way I like to tell people when you can't get a clear message because you don't, haven't um, learnt the skills, is that you need to use a pendulum and at least try and use a pendulum to get some of those yes or no answers on how you can serve uh, the spirit. So from what I've uh, experienced over the past couple of decades is that when you get into a relationship with spirit, he or she will start to... There's always a one basic way that they want you to serve them, and generally that's with time. Maybe have a little altar set up. Of course, uh, make the environment enticing for them to come in. Know the candle colour. Know the direction. So always face the direction of the spirit that you're honouring. Light a candle. Light some incense. Maybe give a little offering. Chant their N E N N. If they have one, not all spirits, only the Goetia spirits mostly have their ends. Or get some mantra beads, um, start chanting um, with the mantra be beads and try and get into a state so you can connect with the spirit. But to find out exactly what else you should be doing, after about three months of doing that, maybe the spirit might start sharing messages or maybe you've tuned into the dark current enough so you can start receiving those messages. So time and dedication is the first key to um, honouring, honouring Satan as well. And if you do that for three months, write in, in three months' time and ask me your next level question um, from what you've experienced at that time. Next question. Hi, hope you're well. Thank you. Um, this is Gankus. Gankus. Ganky Pus. I would like to find out how to remove black magic. My family and I have been suffering for years and I've tried every priest there is. How did that work for you? Um, lately, we found a piece of paper with pubic hair wrapped in plastic near our prayer place. Uh, where are you at? Are you in Thailand or something? Um, is there a book or site where I could gain more information on this? Um, so generally what we do in black magic, if you want to lay down, normally the Thai black magic does stuff like what you're talking about. Um, but, or a lot of Asian based 
magic does does that. But what you're doing is you're cursing uh, or, or hoodoo. Hoodoo does a lot of that type of thing as well. It's in a lot of cultures. But you're going to leave a personal concern with a curse or hex, maybe create a servitor um, in a message. You're going to wrap that up and hide it on the premises. Classic, classic Black Magic 101. And um, generally what happens over time is that people start to feel sick in that environment, normally start attacking each other or fighting. And the goal is with that type of magic is to make everyone sick, make everyone fight, maybe make everyone die or make them move away. That's a goal. So what you really, a priest, mainly priests aren't, um, unless they understand what that is and they can cancel, they can actually deal with um, neutralizing what is there and maybe have enough sense to go around the rest of the property and, and there could be other stuff hidden. They'll need to find that. And then they'll need to do a cleansing of the property and then a cleansing of the individuals. Um, and is it only at your prayer place? I don't know where else it's at. Sometimes if it's at the prayer place, you go back home, you've actually taken that spirit. If it's a spirit attachment, it can follow you home. Maybe there's an infestation now in your home. Um, you have visitors there. It can go into other people's environments. It, there's so many different types of spiritual um, uh, attacks. It really, uh, it needs, you need a consultation to really determine what is going on. But um, other websites and things, I don't know. I, I really don't know, but not, some priests can do it. Sometimes if it's at a prayer place, I'm sure your priest has already tried to do it. Otherwise, you need to book a consultation with me or on our website, there's a service where um, it's a cleansing of an environment. That's probably the first place you should start. We can then have the time to have a look of it, at least your cleansing of your environment and tell you what would be the next steps from that point in time. Okay. Um, Sean says, stupid question, is it possible to sell my soul for something in return, like for money, love, or anything that a person could um, could want? So it's not really, like I joke around all the time and I've got that sell, sell your soul t-shirt. The demon doesn't, demons don't want your soul. Um I think that's a popular media sort of thing, right? To sell your soul to a demon. We play around with that, that verbiage. What it wants is your time and dedication like any ancient God. So I know this, um, a lot of people talk about different ways of actually doing demonic packs and so forth. The way I was trained and my position on this, my very firm position on this, is that if you're entering into a demonic pact or a spiritual relationship, a spiritual contract, that you're in it for the rest of your life. So when you die, that's when the contract ends. And when you die, generally, that's it. Um, because what the what this is, is a spiritual relationship where you're dedicating your time, effort and energy to the spirit. And then they may dedicate some time to you and start helping you um, get what you want. But it's definitely not a genie in the bottle. And you can't just give over your soul, say to Satan, I'll sell your soul. And then he'll say, great, that's exactly what I want. Um, and give you um, a million dollars. It doesn't, I haven't known it to work that way. Okay. And so um, the other thing I like to say is don't make a bucket, like a wish list, like a genie in a bottle list of things that you want, because a pact is a working relationship. Um, it's not, it's not winning the lottery. Um, if you write, actually write in again and ask Lady Hannah to send you, we've got this little um, automated email called, so you want to sell your soul. 
and it talks about my opinion on demonic packs and some of the expectations there. So if you ask her very nicely, she'll she'll get around to doing that. And just I'll just say quickly here, when you email us, it could be a couple of days before we get around to answer. I'm not going to be answering it because I'm doing the work or I'm teaching. I'm not sitting on the emails. But um, and Lady Hannah and Edwin, they're always going to prioritize our current clients first. And so it's not normally only one of them on doing the reports, answering the emails. And so please be patient. So if you're, if you're getting something for free or you're, you're needing a link, it could take three or four days before you get it. So please just remember that. Um, we're, not, we're not Amazon. We're not a big organization. It's, it's just us. Okay, so Connor asks, can I order something from your VIP items if I live in the South Island of New Zealand? Hey, Connor, I love your country. I love, love, love New Zealand, um, especially the South Island. I have a real passion for that place. Like you can hear, I'm Australian, and so Australians love to go and party in Queenstown. Yes, um, go and uh, carve up that Queenstown. <laughs> the mountains down there and uh go skydiving yeah I, lo I just love 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 um new zealand and the south island so i don't know what you mean about um something from your vip services i, I do a vip spell casting and what that means is that we work on oh, but you're talking about shipping it right yeah we can ship to new zealand we don't have any issues shipping to new zealand but um, Australia and New Zealand has strong quarantine laws. So everything is at your own risk. We do our best to pack it, package it up all nice and ship it out to you. But if your customs stop it or squash it or whatever, we don't give refunds for that because once it's gone, it's gone. We do our best from our side. For example, uh, Singapore is classic for smashing up shit from Black Witch Coven. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sure we have a uh, maybe a reputation with Singapore customs. What's up? <laughs> so we, um, our poor Singapore clients, I swear, I feel so sorry for them. There was one very large order and they made sure they shipped it back to us, customs shipped it back to us, and it was all smashed. So the Baphomet st uh, statue was smashed. All the herbs and the powders were opened and thrown around the box. The uh, a a dagger was, like, bent. They really fucked up everything. <laughs> so, um, But we, we warn people, like, you know, it's all care taken from our side, but... You know, it just is the way it is. And UK Customs, right now, we don't ship to the um, uh, to the UK or a lot of the um, Europe countries because we have to, in case you don't know, you probably already know if you live there, they make, uh, they want you to be, fill out documentation and all that sort of stuff. And we're just not interested um, in doing that. So, yes, Connor, just ask us, send in a list of what you want and then we can... Um, reply to that email okay well that's it that's it yay so marvin blessings full moon blessings and if you have a question for the ask savannah video just go over to the website up the top in the top menu it says ask savannah and you can ask your question there and i won't say your name and i'll just give um, a quick little response it's often faster than trying to email and ask me a question and I will say, if you have a delicate question, the best way is to write in. And honestly, probably Blonde Gypsy might give you a quick solution. Um, she might suggest a tarot reading because doing a tarot reading before anything is probably best. And it's uh, probably save you a lot of money. Most people will find that um, to have a reading beforehand will put you on uh, the best direction for what you should be doing with magic versus just guessing. Spirit through divination will guide you. Sometimes, most of the time. <laughs>
Other than that, I'm going to be back in October with the spell casting series. So I really love doing that. And so you'll be watching me perform my little magical spells next month. <laughs> so thank you for listening and blessed bees. Bye for now.